Hello again. And in today's lesson, uh, you're going to need your 12.1 vocabulary. You're going to need your reader and you're going to need your activity page 12.1 and 12.2. So go get those now, get your packet, get your reader, and we'll be ready to go. You can pause the video until you get back. Okay, I'm glad you're back. Now today, students will identify textual details and use them to read the text closely. So close reading is usually reading a couple of times and digging in and, and getting uh, the answers to some vocabulary words. So we're going to look at a close reading today. Um, let's look at our vocabulary first. So take out your vocabulary page. And the first word, OT. This stands for occupational therapy and it consists of exercises and projects used to help patients recover skills for daily life. A great aunt or uncle may have taken OT if they've been, uh, if they've had surgery, or maybe you've got a family member that has been in a car wreck and they have OT, they have occupational therapy or physical therapy, PT. So it can be either OT or PT. All right, so OT is what we're talking about in our story. Melody is a noun, it's a tune. Adept an adjective, very skilled. Flawlessly is an adverb, perfectly without imperfections. Gazed is a verb, looked at closely. Okay, so remember these words as we go through the story. And uh, if you need to come back to this vocabulary page to uh, get the meanings so you can understand it better. All right, now let's look at our readers. Uh, and let's read the story on page 41. So open your reader to page 41 and read along with me. This is uh, Small Steps, The Year I Got Polio, Chapter 13, The Great Accordion Concert. After Peg regained movement, she's transferred to Sheltering Arms, a rehabilitation hospital. There she lives with a group of other girls her age who are also recovering from polio. Peg begins to use a wheelchair and works hard in physical and occupational therapy to get stronger so that she can walk and move easily again. Her parents come to visit every week and she and her roommates have fun together, even as they face the challenges of polio. Although I had not yet mastered the fine art of moving the pile of marbles from spot to spot with my toes, I received a new challenge in OT. I was going to learn to play the accordion. Certain muscles of the arms and, uh, and the hands are used when pushing an accordion in and out. And it happened that I needed help with those particular muscles. The sheltering arms owned an accordion and Miss Ballard knew I'd had two weeks, I'd had two years of piano lessons. She said the accordion was the perfect exercise for me. From my very first attempt, I hated the accordion. It was very, it was heavy and awkward and pushing it in and out made my arms ache. The trick of playing a melody on the keyboard with one hand, pushing the proper chord buttons with the other hand, and at the same time, pushing and pulling on the accordion itself was completely beyond me. It would be easier if you asked me to juggle and tap dance at the same time, I said. You just need practice, Miss Ballard, Ballard replied. Try a little longer. I did try, however, even when I got the correct right hand, right hand note with the proper left hand chord and pushed air through the bellows at the same time. I didn't care for the sound. I had never liked accordion music and my efforts during OT did nothing to change my mind. When my parents heard about the accordion, mother said, what fun, you've always loved your piano lessons. That's different, I said. I like the way a piano sounds. You already know how to read music, Dad pointed out. You will master that accordion in no time. I insisted I would never be adept at the accordion, and Dad kept saying it would be a breeze. I finally said, why don't you play it if you think it's so easy? All right, I will, said Dad, and off he went to the OT room to borrow the accordion. He came back with his shoulder straps in place and an eager look on his face. 
My dad played piano by ear, so he didn't need sheet music. Even so, the sounds he produced could only be called squawks and squeaks. Okay, so why does Peg need to learn to play the accordion? Right, the muscles in her arms and hands needed to be worked. They needed to be developed and accordion playing develops these muscles. All right, have you ever played the accordion? Do you know someone who has played the accordion before? Have you seen an accordion? It's hard to describe, but it is a box and it looks like a bellows. You squeeze it in and out. And on one hand, you have keys like on the piano. And on the other hand, there are buttons for different chords. So you're doing both of these at the same time and playing in and out. And it can be very confusing. I'm not sure I could play it either. But it would take practice, just like anything else that we do. It would take practice. All right, let's look at um, activity page 12.1. And let me turn in my book to 12.1. All right. So let's read this. When you write a personal narrative, you cannot assume that your readers have had the same experiences as you. Some of you may have never seen an accordion. In fact, sometimes the most interesting stories to read were written by people who have had very different experiences from those of their readers. Good writers often describe their experiences so well that readers can understand and visualize what is happening, even if they have not experienced something like it themselves. Now, I want you to look at, to reread pages 41 through 42 again, where Peg is describing learning to play the accordion. And we're going to write down all the textual details that we can find that's related to the accordion. Excuse me. Okay, so she does a good job of telling us how uh, how the accordion looks, how you play it. She's put in a lot of details. So let's look at those and let's write those on the board. So the first one is they must be pushed in and out. Okay, they must be pushed in and out. Now you write these down on this paper as I'm writing them on the board. So write quickly, we're moving right along. This is a longer lesson and we wanna get through it, okay? Accordions uh, are played with the hands and arms. They are heavy and awkward. Why do I have that phrase in quotes? Because it came directly out of the book. These others are my words. This came directly out of the book. All right, what else do we know about accordions? They made Peg's arms ache. Now, partly my words, straight out of the book, in quotes. All right. They produce melodies. They have a keyboard. And they have chord buttons. Now, can you think of anything else? about the accordion. Well, let's see, they have shoulder straps.
They have shoulder straps. What else? What kind of sound do they make? Did she say they that, that dad made? They make squeaks and squawks. And let me see how to spell squeaks and squawks. I'm still not getting it right. Sometimes it takes a while to spell. Now, Okay, squeaks and squawks. So these are all sounds that the accordion makes. These are all uh, adjectives for an accordion. How it's played, what, it, what do you do with it. Now, good writers, I'm going to leave this up while you finish copying and please listen. Good writers often incorporate lots of different kinds of details in their writing. Now we're going to read pages 42 through 45. So we're going back to our reader. All right. So we've read 42 already. Let's start with the first paragraph there. It would be easier. And let's read through 45. So read along with me. It would be easier if you asked me to juggle and tap dance at the same time, I said. You just need practice, Miss Ballard replied. Try a little longer. I did try, however, even when I got the correct right hand note and the proper left hand chord and pushed air through the bellows at the same time. I didn't care for the sound. I had never liked accordion music and my efforts during OT did nothing to change my mind. When my parents heard about the accordion, mother said, what fun. You've always loved your piano lessons. That's different, I said. I like the way a piano sounds. You already know how to read music, Dad pointed out. You will master that accordion in no time. I insisted I would never be adept on the accordion, and Dad kept saying it would be a breeze. I finally said, well, why don't you play it if you think it's so easy? All right, I will, said Dad, and off he went to the OT room to borrow the accordion. He came back with the shoulder straps in place and an eager look on his face. My dad played piano by ear, so he didn't need sheet music. Even so, the sounds he produced could only be called squawks and squeaks. He pushed and pulled, he punched the buttons, he grew red in the face. Beads of perspiration popped up on his bald spot, something vaguely resembling the first few notes of beer barrel polka emerged from the accordion, but they were accompanied by assorted other sounds none of which could be called musical. We girls covered our ears, made faces and booed. We pointed our thumbs down. Mother laughed until tears ran down her cheeks. Finally, dad admitted defeat, temporary defeat. I'll try again next week, he said. Meanwhile, I want you to keep practicing. I will I will, it will sound just as terrible next week, I said, but I agreed to work on my accordion technique a while longer. The following Sunday, we could hardly wait to tease dad about his musical fiasco. When do we get the accordion concert? Renee asked the minute my parents arrived. Wait, exclaimed Alice. I want to put in my earplugs. We teased until dad reluctantly agreed to try it again. We snickered and teeheed, but he, as he brought the OT accordion into the room, he sat on the chair and carefully adjusted the straps. Quit stalling, I said. What's the rush, said Renee as she put her fingers in her ears. Dad began to play. Instead of squeaks and squawks, he played beer barrel polka flawlessly from start to finish. Our jaws dropped. We gazed at him as each and at each other in astonishment. When he finished the song, our questions exploded like a string of firecrackers. How did you learn to play? Who taught you? Where did you get an accordion? He simply smiled while mother applauded. Then they told us the whole story. 
He had rented an accordion from a music store and practiced every spare second in order to surprise us with his concert. Can you play any other songs? I asked. It took me all week to learn that one, Dad said. And he stayed up until midnight every night practicing, Mother added. After that, I didn't dare complain about my accordion sessions. I never did get as good as it, at it as Dad got in just seven days, but I managed to produce a few recognizable tunes, and the effort did help strengthen my arms and my fingers. Okay, so does Peg's mother think Peg will like playing the accordion? And give a reason from the text. Yes, she does think so. And what did mother say? She said Peg enjoyed piano lessons. Why does Peg think the accordion will be different from the piano? Peg doesn't like the accordion music. She doesn't like the sound that it makes. Why does Peg's father think she will learn the accordion quickly? Because she can read music. Peg has many reasons to try playing the accordion. What finally causes her to start playing it? Because father learned to play the song in seven days. What is the effect of Peg's accordion playing? What effect does it have on her muscles? Her fingers and her arms grew stronger, didn't they? All right, now let's look at 12.2. Uh, and uh, as we look at it, read the directions with me. Remember that good writers use many different kinds of detail to help readers understand and visualize the events described in the text. Use this activity to record some of the details Carrot uses in her work. You've already noted some of the detail, text details about accordions. Use the chart below to record at least two different kinds of details that describe something other than the accordion. All right, so what we're going to do is, uh, let me erase this. And on your chart, I'm going to fill in and help you fill in the type of detail. And then you're going to go back and you're going to find the detail in the reading passage and write the sentence in quotes in, in the detail section of this chart. So the type of detail. So the first one, what something looks like. So you're going to find a detail in the text about what something looks like. And you might say, he grew red in the face, beads of perspiration popped out on his bald spot. That's what something looks like. You can see dad turning red. You can see the perspiration popping out on his forehead. Okay. So you would say, put it in quotes. He turned red in the face. And then beads of perspiration popped out. on his bald spot. And end quote. Put it in quotes. You have to have a beginning quote and an end quote. Okay, so we're, I'm going to give you these sections and you're going to look in the text and find the other. The next one is what something feels like. Find a quote out of the text about what something feels like. All 
All right. For what something feels like when she played the accordion, how did it make her feel? What something sounds like when dad played the accordion, what did it sound like? All right. What something tastes, smells or tastes like. All right. What something smells or tastes like? What do you think? Was there anything about smelling and tasting? I don't think so. So that one might be left blank, but be sure you fill this in. A physical action. What is a physical action? She put her fingers in her ears. Their jaws dropped open. Those are physical actions. A quote from the, of what someone said, dialogue. So a quote, dialogue. This could be anything. It could be something mother said. It could be something dad said. Oh, and you can't see that. There we go. It could be something dad said. Um, it could be, I want to put in my earplugs, what one of the girls said, okay? So now I want you to pause the video now. I want you to fill in the rest of this chart and then start the video again. And we will continue on because we have more lesson here. Okay, so pause it now and fill in the chart. Okay, so now we're going to look at goodbye, silver, hello, sticks. So we're going to turn to the next page, page 46. It's one page and we're going to read this together. So get your reader and let's read. After weeks of intensive therapy, Peg is finally ready to walk again with her newly arrived walking sticks. Two weeks after I got my sticks, Miss Ballard told me I was strong enough to use them exclusively, which means no more wheelchair. I didn't need silver anymore. You, you gave me a lot of good rides, I whispered as I patted silver's side for the last time. I blinked back tears, feeling foolish. I had looked forward to this day for months, and now that it was here, I was all weepy about leaving my wheelchair behind. Silver had carried me to school, distributed countless treats, and taken me safely to OT, my sessions with Miss Ballard, visits with other patients and special events in the sunroom. I'd had many fine times, including my 13th birthday in that wheelchair. As I thought about them, I realized that even if I had never grown strong enough to leave Silver, I still would have been able to lead a happy life. I took Silver for a farewell trip, which ended with a high-speed dash down the hall, a screech of brakes, and finally a shout of, hi -oh, Silver, away! Teetering on the two rear wheels, I tipped back farther than I had ever gone before. It was a terrific last ride. Okay, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Now let's look at the second part of 12.2. Turn on the back, and it says part two. Now we're going to do the same thing about the type of details for part two. So let me erase this. You're going to put the same things under type of details. You're going to write what something looks like. Really didn't tell us about what it looked like, did it? Okay. What something feels like. She said she felt foolish, a little foolish. So you might put that. What something sounds like, a screech of brakes. What something smells or tastes like. She didn't eat anything in there. A physical action. She blinked back tears as she patted Silver's side. Now go back and look in the, the reading and put in the correct quotes for these things. And then a quote of what someone said, dialogue. 
Peg said, you gave me a lot of good rides. So those are things that you're going to put here. You've got a feels like, you've got a sounds like, you've got a physical action, and you've got a dialogue for this one. So find those quotes and write them in. How did Peg expect to feel when she got to stop using the wheelchair? She expected to feel happy because she was tired of using it. How did Peg actually feel when she told Silver goodbye? She was, she was a little teary, wasn't she? She was a little upset because it was like losing an old friend. All right, what is the word or phrase in the text that helps you know this? All right, she was sad and it said she blinked, excuse me, blinked back tears. So blinked back tears is the quote from the text. What, in quotes, fine times did Peg have with silver? Oh, it listed a lot, didn't it? It said it helped her attend school, uh, sessions with Miss Ballard, OTC, o, OT sessions, and she also had her birthday in it. She, while she was in the wheelchair, her birthday had come around and she'd had her birthday. So she had a lot of life in that wheelchair, didn't she? All right, how has Peg's perspective on life changed through her time in the wheelchair? Well, she learned that she could have a happy life, even if she had to use silver all the time. So even if she didn't move up to walking with sticks, she could have led a happy life just being in the wheelchair. A lot of people that have to be in wheelchairs, it's hard for them to admit that and find that out. But no matter what circumstances you are in, you can always have a happy life. It's what you make of it. That's all of our lesson for today. Be sure you fill out these papers and that are in your packet and I'll see you tomorrow.